Hi, and welcome back to the Food Fund, where we explore all things related to investing in food and beverage stocks. If you are new here, our goal is to help you put your money where your mouth is and invest in great companies. If you love food and love stocks, you will definitely love this channel. In this video we will be doing an analysis of Kellanova, formerly Kellogg, and seeing if it would be a great addition to the food fund after the company's historic split. Be sure to watch through the end of the video where I share my final thoughts on that. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. Start with some background on Kellanova. Kellogg was founded in 1906 in Battle Creek, Michigan and grew to be one of the largest food companies in the world. Home to some of the most recognizable brands such as Keebler, Frosted Flakes, Pop-Tarts, Pringles, and Morningstar Farms, the company shocked the world by deciding to break the company in two. Kellanova, ticker symbol K, was created to focus on snacks and other food offerings while W.K. Kellogg, ticker symbol KLG, houses the traditional cereal brands in North America. Following the announcement and completion of the split, share prices for both companies continued to fall. Now let's take a closer look at Kellanova. Starting with the one-year chart we see that Kellanova had a cager of about minus 26%. Zooming out to the 5 year chart we see that Kellanova had a cager of minus 5%. Kellanova has had poor price action for some time. Now, let's take a look at the fundamentals. Please note that these values concern Kellogg company prior to the split meaning that both the cereal and snack businesses are accounted for in this analysis. Gross margin is 31%. Not bad for a company this big. Revenue has compounded at around 4% over the past 5 years and has reached nearly $15.9 billion most recently. Decent revenue growth and good gross margins are enticing so far. Looking at cash flow we see a minus 1% cager over the last 5 years for operating cash flow, while capex has decreased at about a minus 1% cager. As a result free cash flow has slowly declined over time at a minus 1% cager. While it is good that capex spend is declining, the drop in operating cash flow leaves free cash flow trending downwards. Weighted average shares outstanding have slightly decreased over the last 5 years, going from 348 million shares in 2019 to 346 million shares most recently. Kellanova has been very slowly buying back shares. Now let's view return on invested capital. Return on invested capital has fallen from 10.4% in 2018 to 7.2% in 2023. The efficiency in the company had been declining for a while which may be what prompted the split in an effort to unlock value. Another favorite metric is cash conversion cycle. A measure of operational efficiency regarding supplier and payer leverage as well as inventory control. Going from minus 11 days in 2018 to minus 1 days most recently, Kellanova has gotten less efficiency managing inventory over time. However, the negative cash conversion cycle value does show that some operating leverage has been maintained but is at risk going forward. Last, let's explore Kellanova's debt. The net debt to EBITDA has improved from 3.7 in 2018 to 3.4 most recently. Again, Kellanova has been very slowly improving its debt situation. The fundamentals of Kellanova are not stellar and the effects of the split may not be fully realized for several quarters. In any event, should Kellanova be added to the portfolio? Before sharing my final thoughts on that, please click the like button and let YouTube know that you like the content. Subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you catch the latest videos. Your continued support means so much to the food fund. Now, let's get into my final thoughts. Okay, let's go to the spreadsheet and write out some key values for Kellanova. It is a food company with a gross margin of 31%. The 5-year revenue per share cager is 4% and the 5-year free cash flow per share cager is minus 1%. Good margins with decent growth is promising but the diminishing free cash flow is a sign of caution. A return on invested capital of 7% is okay but the value has been falling over time. Next, the cash conversion cycle of minus 1 days still shows operating leverage that may be further boosted by the company split. Concerning debt, a net debt to EBITDA of 3.4 means that it takes Kellanova a little under 3.5 years of earnings to pay off their debt. So from a fundamental standpoint, 
Kelanova is okay as a company. Now let's switch our attention over to valuation. Kelanova is just undervalued relative to the S&P 500 with a ratio of 0.9. The price to earnings growth, or PEG ratio, is 7.2 which means that Kelanova is very overvalued compared to its projected earnings growth. This value may be a little off given the reduction in earnings due to the split. Kellogg has long underperformed and the share price for both Kellanova and WK Kellogg has dropped since the companies were created. However, most of Kellanova's problems seem to lie with operating cost and a lack of efficiency which are areas that may be improved with the recent split. The good news is that the gross margin is healthy, indicated good brand value, and revenue is still growing, albeit very slowly. My hunch is that there is a strong amount of value that is being unlocked in the split and the share price may be over penalized over the new few quarters creating some attractive entry points. For now I will pass on Kalanova and allow time to evaluate the standalone business over the next few quarters. In the meantime, I will place it on the watch list. Many thanks for watching. What do you think about Kellogg and the split into Kalanova and WK Kellogg? Please share your thoughts below. It is always great to hear from you. Please check out some more videos right now and don't forget to put your money where your mouth is.